tell him. So anyway, he called. It was just conversation. It was nothing. It wasn't like dating. It wasn't anything personal. It was just the weather, cars, this, that, uh, just general conversation. So I never got around to saying, you know, I'm praying. Don't, you know, you don't need to call me. I'm waiting on the Lord or anything like that. So um, later on, I mean, he just kept calling me. So I, in home group, I said, well, I have a situation. I don't know if it's of God, but um, I need God to take care of it. I don't want to have to say anything. I just want God to take care of it. And uh, so back to John J. Seelan, uh, the, the, thing that God used to confirm with, um, it was Francis and Lisa. Lisa was praying. Francis um, is a man. Um, he, con she con he confirmed to her, because John J. Asina got a word, Caracas. That he saw her walking on the beach with her husband and the word Caracas. So I was like, well, Lord, I need a Caracas. I need a word like that <laughs> so I know. So um, through the divorce, the whole time I was going through that battle, uh, Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against me shall prosper, was the word that I stood on. And so I'm like, well, that's the only thing I can think of. That's my word. I'm just, I'm just believing that I'm going to know who the person is. Um, by that word. So we prayed about the thing that I didn't tell them what it was. I just needed God to take care of it. And they prayed for me. And then after they prayed, Carol gets, and she says, Kim, does no weapon formed against you shall prosper mean anything to you? And I said, yes, it does. <laughs> and so I'm still thinking because we, God, we think, oh, that's the answer. I'm, I'm still, I don't think it's about James. I'm still trying to put God in my box, but that's not how he operates. So don't always take that word to mean what you think it means. You need to listen what he's saying it means. So I said, okay, that's my confirmation. I'm going to know who my husband is because I, I didn't want to pick a husband. I, don't, I didn't do real good the first time. Uh, no, no harm against him. I'm just saying if we were both living for the Lord, that would have worked out, but we weren't. We, we were in church for a few years, and then we went backslid, and then everything went south. Let me just say it that way. Anyway, um, so I'm expecting, okay, uh, that's how I'm going to know who my husband is. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, or me shall prosper. And then um, James kept calling me. I thought, well, he's going to quit calling me now. No, nope, he kept calling, and I'm like, Lord, he is still calling me. You didn't make him stop calling me. So I said, okay, Lord, if this is who you got planned for me, then let his birthday be. Now, I did not say this out loud. I'm not trying to give the enemy any weapon to use against me. See, sometimes we can put the weapon in Satan's hand. Yes, that's right. So remember, he can't form a weapon against you that will prosper, but you can give him the weapon that will prosper. So keep your mind straight and don't give the enemy any weapon to use against you. And so I said... Uh, Lord, he's still calling me, and I need to know that I know, so let his birthday be. And this is all in my mind. I was not speaking anything out loud that Satan could use against me. And I said, okay, so I saw all these little squares like calendar months, January, February, March, April, May. And I went all, I need to add one other thing because I forgot to tell you this. So James called me. It was on August 19th. That's because I know that because it was Melinda's birthday my oldest daughter and he we were talking and I was like yeah it's my daughter's birthday and he goes oh well when is your birthday and I said October 11th and he said everybody in my family well actually I'm, I'm mixing it up I apologize I saw all the months I went all the way down to like November then I came back and I stopped at March and I said okay March 28th I just threw that number out there so back to our conversation on Melinda's birthday. He said, when's your birthday? Mine's October 11th. He said, everybody in my family's birthday is in October, except mine. He's like, yeah, my mom's is October 6th, and David's is the 9th, and my dad and my sister's was the 21st, and blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, well, when is yours? And he said, March. And he paused, just like I did when I was talking to the Lord about it, 28th. And so, I mean... You know, that was my Caracas word. 
you know, you can't, that's undeniable. How do you pick somebody's birthday out? I mean, that's just, so these things, no weapon formed against me shall prosper, his birth date, and I, I think there was a third one, which I can't think of at the moment, but God uses things to guide us sometimes when we don't know which way to go. And so, um, anyway, one of the things, back to the forgiveness, early on, when after the Lord uh, gave me confirmation, I was on the phone with James. Actually, I called him. God put it on my heart so strongly to tell him that I forgave him of the crime that he committed. Now, it wasn't against me. It was, it was, but I felt that I had to tell him that I forgave him for it. And so, God made his ministry about forgiveness, and, that's, and I was one of the people that had to forgive him. So, anyway, God is good, and he will forgive us if we ask. And, but he does demand that we forgive others. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. Some of us, like the guys aside, we think that what we've done is too big, too big for God. And I'm here, I stand in front of you today as a testimony that it's not. Because if you ask some people, you know, what was the wor one of the worst things that you could do to a person, and it would be homicide, especially a homicide of a child, you know, their daughter. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be showing a video here in a minute. This is God has, God made this video. You know, we didn't do nothing. You know, Bert and I didn't. Bert was Vera's brother. Bert swore on his sister's grave that he was going to revenge her death. And you'll hear him talk about it in the video. Uh, he was so ate up with hate that he actually had my EOS date as his PIN number for his ATM. And every time he'd do a transaction, he says, that's the day he dies. That's the day I kill him. That's the day I get revenge. He was ate up with hate. And it was destroying him. It was destroying his life. You know what they say about hate? It's like drinking poison and expecting the other person, the you unforgiveness, know, you know, to, to kill them. But it's actually it's destroying you. And that's what it was doing to Bert in his life. Mr. Baker, like I said, as I mentioned, he was a Methodist minister. It was destroying his ministry. And actually, in reality, the whole theme of this was I was the tool that Satan used to try to destroy Mr. Baker's ministry. Mr. Baker was a mighty man of God, and God was using him mightily for his kingdom. You know, and usually when uh, a family, a, a couple, their siblings is, is murdered like that, they usually end up in a divorce and in alcoholism and it just destroys their lives. Mrs. Baker forgave me first about three years deep into my sentence and it took Mr. Baker, I think it was seven years, he forgave and he took it back and Bert was like, yeah, because he thought when he heard about the forgiveness story, he said, man, them people lost their minds, you know, but then his daddy took it back and said, yeah, that's my, that's my man, you know. But about nine years deep, I believe it was, Mr. Baker forgave me. In 16 years, while God was working with me in confinement, changing my heart and my life, he was actually working on Bert at the same time. I did not know that. Because when I got out, I got out, I'm like, Lord, you know Bert's gunning for me. I said, Lord, I give it to you. You tell us to bring all things to you. I said, this is not pretty. I said, but it, here it is. And I gave it to God. I said, Lord, if he kills me, my blood's on your hands. I'm giving it to you. You know, I'm talking about trust God. And I trusted God with that. So I turned the corner doing a Kyle Ross ministry. I turned the corner and there stood Bert. And Bert, and we kind of reenacted that a little bit in this video. And I just hung my head and cried. And Bert says, the only thing you come up and say is, hey, you know, it's been a long time coming. I'm giving part of the video away, but I think it's very important. You know, he, because when he chose to forgive me, he's like, all right, like, all right, God, I forgive, I forgive James, but it ain't like I got to go out and eat with him. Well, when we met, he, we hugged, and, and he told me it's been a long time coming, and we went in and ate. And it's just to show you the power of God. You know, God is a master of bringing healing and restoration to people's lives. If you'll truly trust him and give it to God, he can heal and bring um, uh, healing to your life. Now, I feel led to say this real quick, and I'm going to say a name, and it's going to perk up Pastor Lyle. Bobby Turner. Bobby Turner, uh, we were ministering, Mr. Baker, Mr. Baker, Bert, and I were ministering at UCI, and Bobby come to me, and he said, man, I sure wish, I sure wish that would be my testimony, and that's because I, I don't know if you, those that know Bobby Turner, but Bobby Turner actually executed his father-in-law right over there on Lanier Road with a shotgun, and uh, 
And Bobby, I said, well, Bobby, you need to start praying about it. Get real with God. Got to get real with you. He can bring healing and restoration. Long story short, when Bobby got out of UCI, his, ex, his ex-in-laws come picked him up and threw the barbecue and everything for him. And that's the power of That's another one. That's just the power of God, how God can bring healing and restoration. And that's Bobby Turner's story. Really? Yeah, I still love him. Yeah, I gave him a big old hug, too. We're going to play this video, and after, like I said, after video, the uh, pastor's going to have a little um, forgiveness ceremony. Pat Robertson, this thing was featured on the 700 Club, and it, it was, you know, a night to God that it, <laughs> that it went international. I mean, it went international, and God made this. And um, it's, uh, I don't like the video, actually. It's a very strong video. I don't like the reenactment, but I do like the end of it because they'll get to see Bert, Mr. and Mrs. Baker, and everybody in the video. So let's get this, this Pastor Lyle gets this thing keyed up. Just listen to it and see the power of God move in, in our lives. Amen.
police soon arrested James and he was sentenced to 30 years in prison for murder. He would be eligible for parole after 10 years. Bert was already with his parents for the day James was put out. I made his release date, my age, and his number, so that every time I would get money out of the bank, and I would push my pen number in, I really would get the money out of the bank. I would push my pen number in, I would remember that that's the day that money gets out. After 15 years in prison, something changed for him. That's when that confidence started going in my heart. I told God, you know, you see, you got a good talk to me. Some of you love me, but your son died. You know, the cross. I told God, what would you like when my dad died? And God, he just continued showing his love on me. For the next seven days, the Holy Spirit started pouring 50 issues out. They started hurting my back for seven straight days. And the Holy Spirit would bring different things to me. The anger that I had towards God and different issues. And I had set the cross on my knowledge for me. That's what the second case was about. And the other case that you hear me talk about, it's a pastor on the hand. After asking God to forgive him, James wondered if his ex wife's family ever could. He knew he had to ask by writing them a letter. I had basically asked him to forgive me for the whole life. James's ex-wife's parents were only one of his parents. I laid the burden down and I said, James, I forgive you for what we did. It was based on the scripture that was found in Luke 23, 34, where Jesus said to the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they did. I've been angry long enough. It was time to get rid of that anger. It was time to honor the memory. Then they showed the letter to Bert and asked if he would forgive James. And Bert, who had tried to James for years, finally started to soften to the idea of forgiveness. As I finished the letter, I looked up and I told God, I said, Okay, God, you win. I forgive James Wagner. I even told the people in my Bible study, I have done what God told me to, and I have forgiven them. But I told him I didn't want to be generous. In 2002, James was released from prison after serving 20 years. He started working in the prison ministry as a great. They remember the day they saw each other for the first time in 20 years. He brought his head almost as if it shame. And when he did that, it gave me confirmation that he was truly sorry. I looked at me. I just saw him for a long time coming. At that point, I knew it was okay to do it. Today, Bert Baker and James Lee have faithfully served together in prison ministry. But ask him what he's most grateful for, and he'll tell you about the power of forgiveness. These days, I can eat dinner with James and know that the man sitting across the table from me is one of my brothers. There's someone that I love and someone that loves me. And we no longer are prisoners of the unforgiveness that we felt. I had God given that the awful lot that and the pain and the loss that I felt. It's like the Father's love. You know you've done wrong. But your father forgives you. Such a brother that can not forgive. And you just thank you. Thank you. Thank you for us. It can be like a poison in your spirit and corroding your soul. And it tastes so delicious when you think about the revenge you want to wreck on somebody who's hurt you. And you bring it up over and over again. It tastes good. And then it comes down like poison and it eats you and corrodes you and destroys you. Jesus Christ said, when you stand and pray, if you've got all the next day before you do it, if your heavenly Father might be near you, if you want to be in a state of forgiveness, you want to be in a state of being born again, you have to be willing to forgive. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's the secret, it's the key. 
pretty deep, isn't it? Well, it's a testimony to show you what God can do for you in your life. What a difference that he can bring, that he can change, change moral enemies. Just only as pastors getting, getting ready for the, the little forgiveness ceremony. Bert and I have done many prison ministries together, and one of the things I want to share with just two of them, actually. We, just, we ministered at a church on Father's Day. And we went back over to Bert and Linda's house, and we were swimming in the pool, flipping hamburgers together. You know, you would watch us, and you would think we were best friends all of our life. You know? Another time, the Kyle Ross said, actually, you know, when we go down and do these retreat weekends, we stay in the hotel down there. But the outside coordinator had actually messed up and put Bert and I in the same hotel room, and he went to Bert, Bert, oh, I'm so sorry, dude, to put you and Gator in the same room, man. Bert laughed, and he said, I don't worry about it, bro. It's just, <laughs> that's just another chapter in our testimony. And so we actually got to where we preferred we always stay in the same hotel room together when we ministered. And people would just, how do you do that, Bert? And Bert just laughed. And Satan did tempt him one night when he walked by. 
because I sleep with it because inside there's always a light on so I like to put a t-shirt over my face and I had a I had a pillow over my face and I didn't have a t-shirt anyway he had good bathroom and he walks by and he looks so it's like there's your chance there's your chance and the bird just laughed and said yeah and I love him <laughs> amen but God has done a miraculous work in our lives and I thank God for it and I give him all the glory because as you can tell this is too big for, for men you know because as a as a a carnal man, man cannot do that. That's too big. It's just too big, too much, as I was saying, you know, in the debts. But with God, all things are possible. Amen? That's right. What are we doing with this? Trash can? Get your microphone back. <laughs> Get your microphone back. Yeah.